I'm really excited because I got this box after a saga of traveling across continental US, across the Pacific, across all over Australia, and it finally got to me. But uh, this is a new Parkhurst boot. It's actually a, a sample. It had, it's not even hit production yet. Uh, it's a stitch down sample that Parkhurst is trialing. So keep watching and I'll tell you what I think. G'day, welcome to Bootlosophy, and if you're new here, my name is Tech. I acknowledge the uh, Wajik people who are the traditional custodians of the lands that I live on. Now, um, I'm really excited because this is uh, a box that's arrived, which is the uh, Parkhurst stitch down sample with Italian Tempesti leather. Uh, it's been made in Portugal, and uh, I think the, the production release is scheduled for sometime in the northern summer this year. Uh, but there are apparently some uh, issues that uh, Andrew wants to finish off uh, in the design and the lasting and so on uh, before he does the production. So let's open the box. So here we go. Let's just... Now one thing about Parkhurst um, is that Andrew's uh, shipping box is actually the shoe box. There's nothing, no other box inside. Um, there we go. Uh, as usual, a spare set of laces. I'm assuming there's, there's laces on the, in the boot. Uh, a thank you card from Andrew and the shipping uh, information. New uh, tissue paper to protect the, the boot, which are protected by boot bag anyway. So. Uh, it's good to see that Andrew's gone back to the old Parkhurst boot bag rather than the unbranded ones that I've had in the last uh, couple of boots. Um, oh, and there you go. Uh, Italian Tempesti leather. Uh, this is, I guess, strictly speaking, the, the Allen model from Parkhurst because there's no cap toe. Uh, but I understand it's a new last. It is based on the 602 last, but uh, it's not even the 602M. I think there are some subtle differences to it. You can see a much rounder toe, much broader rounder toe. Uh, and, and Andrew tells me he's still experimenting with it. It's, this is not the final version of the last. And uh, I think that's really exciting. Um, from what I can see, it's been really well put together. Uh, this is a stitch down model, 270 degrees stitch down. Uh, you can see the double stitch down happening there. All of Andrew's models until now have been Goodyear welted and usually 360 degree Goodyear welted with a reverse, uh, uh, split reverse weld. But in this case, it's stitch down, which means that the front uh, three quarters of the boot, the uppers are, are uh, lasted across, over the last and then Bottom edge is splayed out and is sewn directly into the midsole. Uh, one stitch of it goes into the midsole and the other stitch goes right through to the outsole and you can see that stitching there. While we're on the outsole, uh, this is, I'm not sure if this light, you can see the logo. This is a Parkhurst proprietary uh, lug sole. Andrew tells me that he's had tremendous problems in the past because of the combination last that he uses uh, with the 602 in particular that the uh, branded lasts don't really fit, sorry, the branded soles don't fit his last because it's very hard to center them apparently. They're made for a, a normal uh, boot last and because his are narrow and wide, they kind of get off center, whether he's using Ridgeway or Vibram. So he's actually had to make his own proprietary uh, uh, outsoles in order to fit his lasts. And as you can see, uh, it's not a particularly thick lug, it's quite low profile and it's inboard uh, from the edge of the boot. So I think it sort of hides the fact that this is a, a, a rugged outsole. Uh, from what I can see of the stitching, look it is hand stitched in Portugal in a new factory that Andrew's trying out, but I guess you can see it starts as reasonably even and then it does kind of 
sort of go a little bit uneven here, but you know, it, it's it's handmade, I guess, if you uh, take that on board. Uh, the stitch density, what's that, an inch? The stitch den density is pretty good, even on that side where it's not particularly parallel. Uh, on this side, what's roughly an inch? It's much more even than the stitch density is really pretty good. Uh, the leather feels, I think it's about, I think it's a little over two millimeters thick from feel. I'll get it measured at some stage. Uh, but it has a, a slightly oily matte effect. So uh, on, on touch, it feels very similar to uh, the Red Wings harness leathers. You get that slightly oily feel. But this is a veg tan leather. Um, so it, it's, it's a little firmer in temper, uh, not as, as flexible, has a reasonably good pull up. That has a nice effect. I think this will patina quite nicely being a veg tan. Uh, and in dark brown, it shouldn't stain. Uh, the boot is unlined in the shaft, although it has that backing. And you can see it's made in Portugal. Uh, and it is, it, yeah, it's lined in the vamp. Um, with a kind of smooth grain leather. The tongue is semi-gusseted up to the last eyelet. So that's quite good, stops it slipping and it has a certain water resistance up to the eyelets. Talking about hardware, one, two, three, four, five eyelets and three speed hooks. They feel pretty sturdy. Uh, oh, I see. The backing of the eyelets is washed. Uh, and it's just pressed at the speed hooks, but I can't feel any rough edges. So that's it's quite nicely uh, uh, constructed that way. Uh, stitching, from what I can see, is pretty good. Uh, quite parallel double stitch, quite parallel uh, quadruple stitch. Uh, maybe a little waver, but it, it's look, it's neat, it's clean, uh, and I wouldn't con a complaint on a boot like this. This is not exactly a Crockett and Jones dress boot uh, and it's not meant to be. You can see you know, the thickness of the leather. It's, it's, I think it's going to be quite firm. It's going to be interesting I feel in foot. Uh, the laces, this is new for Parkhurst. Leather, not rawhide. Uh, dark on both sides. Uh, by the feel of it, it's slightly stretchy. I think this might be Latigo or Latigo leather. Uh, I'm not sure I'm a fan of these laces. I might change them over for a different set of leather laces, or I might even use it. I might even put these in. What do you think? Okay, so let's take a look at the other boot. So again, the immediate thing you smell is that that um, um, quite vegetative veg tan leather smell. It smells, I don't know, it smells of bark, tree bark. Uh, pretty thick, uh, what looks like potentially a, a double leather midsole before you get the uh, proprietary rubber sole. And then stacked leather heel with a uh, top lift. Uh, from my understanding is Andrew finishes off the boots himself in his basement by uh, nailing on the uh, the uh, 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 heels so a stack leather heel by the feel of the heel counter I can't tell whether it's leather but it actually feels it has the give of leather oh the toe puff is definitely celastic I think because um, it's quite it gives and it pops. Single piece backstay, boondocker style, very nice. Um, very nice quarter panels. Terrific. Okay, let's uh, try these on feet. All right, let's get these on for you. Um, this is the part of my first impressions videos that I'm always concerned in case I take 10 minutes to struggle to get into these boots. Uh, but no, <laughs> they slipped in perfectly. Uh, first impression of the feel is uh, very similar to the 602 last. Uh, Andrew told me he hasn't actually got a name for this new last yet, but it is a derivation of the 602M, 
and it, and it feels um, fairly similar. Mm. The laces are long, they're, they're slightly stretchy, which is, um, I have other pairs of Latigo, Latigo uh, laces, and I'm not a huge fan because they're a bit stretchy. That feels quite good tied on. Uh, in terms of sizing, these are made in Portugal, as I said earlier, um, and obviously part of Europe, they use the European sizing system, you know, 41, 42, 43, and translate into the English. Uh, these are actually a size seven and a half. Now, my immediate uh, suspicion, and I asked Andrew, was whether these were European sizing, and of course they are, which means that seven and a half UK is equivalent to eight and a half US. Um, so that means these are true to size at eight and a half US or my UK size, seven and a half UK, which means I think they're true to size at 41.5 uh, European. I know sizing is confusing. Uh, Andrew has said that uh, in production, he will be uh, uh, getting them to be called the same sort of sizing that he uses on his uh, Spanish boots, which is the American sizing numbers. Uh, they definitely feel good. Nice and uh, roomy in the ball of the toe, a uh, ball of the foot. Uh, the toes have sufficient room to kind of wriggle. Uh, the heel feels locked in. So seven and a half in these Portuguese Parker stitch downs is easily equivalent to an eight in his normal uh, Spanish boots, Spanish made boots. The leather is a uh, full veg tan burgundy leather from Tempesti in Italy. Uh, Andrew thinks that he's going to produce using Tempesti leathers, uh, uh, different types of leathers. He, he, he says they make some really good stuff uh, and a good amount of the relaunch that he's had over the, this last year has been how to diversify and try new things. So this is good. Um, I'll just read a little thing here from Andrew when he talks about production. These will be made in Portugal, he says. Um, the factory there has the machinery to do the double knee, uh, row stitch down, and no other factory globally with whom I have spoken, that's Andrew, has the machinery, cutting technology or the experienced workers to do it, or to make boots for me on a production scale. Uh, as he says, um, Unfortunately, not, no one factory can make everything 100%. So he does the finishing touches like uh, burnishing, sanding, hue pad, cutting and gluing uh, done in his warehouse by himself. Um, and he, he, he says that much of the connection here in Europe between factories is actually everyone knows everyone. So um, as things are required, they actually refer him to other factories who can do these. But certainly the fit is good, the feel is good, the leather is a, quite a firm temper. Um, and I think it's going to be very sturdy. Uh, the comfort underfoot is really good. So, you know, um, the what I saw as, as a, a, a double uh, leather midsole, I think is really going to help as your feet mold into shape. Okay, so there you are. Uh, I'll bring you a full review after I've worn these for a few months. So until then, let's go to the summary. Okay, so there you go. I hope you like my unboxing and my initial impressions. Um, the, the last is uh, a little bit of a surprise because I think it's a bit more rounded than the 602. And therefore, if I stand and look down, it kind of looks spade-like, but it doesn't, it doesn't feel that way. It feels nice. Um, so, uh, uh, Andrew's got a few uh, things he has to do uh, for production, uh, I, and I do believe he's trying to schedule it for a, a late northern summer release. Uh, so that's going to be very interesting, I think. Um, check the website below. Uh, it is an affiliate link, so if you buy something through that, I will get a little bit of a, I think it's a 6% kickback. Uh, helps defray the cost of the channel. Uh, look, hope you, uh, as, as usual, after I wear these for a few months, I will bring you a full review of them. Now, these are samples, so uh, whatever I say that might have gone wrong with them might have been improved by uh, production, and maybe production might change quite a few things as well. But I will bring them to you, at least as a, as a pair of sample boots to see 
uh, what I think of them after wearing them for a, a few uh, months. So I'm hoping you like this video. Don't forget to click on the like button, that's the thumbs up button below, and click on subscribe if you're not subscribed, like the majority of my viewers constantly come back, but they're not subscribed. So if you subscribe, it'll help me out, and you're going to watch it anyway. All right? So take care. I'll see you soon.